In this episode, we are going to address the reign of Augustus and his legacy in Rome. He's one of the greatest rulers of the Roman Empire. The Forum of Augustus is one of the great monuments we can take a look at to get a sense of the long reign of Augustus. Now it's found in 42 BC at the Battle of Philippi. It's completed in 2 BC. And what we have here is a response to the earlier Forum of Caesar. So we have a Forum Piazza, we have a temple, in this case of Mars Ultor, avenging the death of Julius Caesar. We have long porticos, and behind them we have these lovely apses that are used as tribunals. And then we have tons of niches where they were lined with statues of the greatest men, the Sumi Wiri. And at the center of each apse on either side, there was a grand statue, a colossal statue of Aeneas on one side, and on the other, Romulus, tying Augustus to the mythology of the people of Rome. It truly is a testament to the grand vision that Augustus had. The pavement was lined with colored marble imported from all over the empire, starting a new trend. Of course, there was the Hall of the Colossus with at least an 11 meter high statue of Augustus himself. And what's protecting it, and one of the reasons why we have so much of it, is because there is this massive 30 meter high, over 100 meter long firewall made of fireproof tuff, pepperino in particular, protecting what's nice made of marble in the form of Augustus and what's behind the slums of Rome, the famous Subura, today's Monti. So when we take a look at the remains, the excavated remains of the form of Augustus, we're getting all kinds of insights into his reign and there are many particular details of this monument that tie in to other monuments that are built throughout the city. But we want to think about Augustus and what he does to the city. He's literally transforming the entire city. He's building on the Palatine Hill. He's building extensively in the Roman Forum. He's building in the Campus Martius. But one of the big defining monuments for him is going to be the Forum with his name on it, the Forum of Augustus. One of our great ancient sources that tells us about the life of Augustus is the Res Gestae, his autobiography. We have so many details that can narrate his impressive reign. Gaius Octavius was born September 23rd, 63 BC. Early on in his career, he caught the attention of his great uncle, Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was assassinated on the Ides of March in 44 BC. When his will was read, it was Octavian that was named as his heir. Now, Octavian acted quickly at the age of 19 to set himself up politically. He celebrates the Ludi Caesaris in the Circus Maximus. He becomes a member of the Senate and is made a consul already in 43 BC at a very young age. Breaking into politics also meant getting military support and he appealed to military veterans to sustain him as the son of Julius Caesar, who was becoming a god. And that's a great way to start your politicking. Now, he vowed a temple to Julius Caesar in 42 BC. We can see here the remains of the temple that was completed in 29 BC in the Roman Forum. He fought and won the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC with Mark Antony, and that was the end of the conspirators and the suicide of Brutus and Cassius. And for that battle, he had vowed the temple to Mars Ultor to avenge the death of Julius Caesar, and that's the temple within the form of Augustus that we've already seen. Now he's going to form a power base to rule Rome with Mark Antony and Lepidus, the second triumvirate. He's charged with dispersing the veterans after the war against the conspirators, and he runs into all kinds of trouble. The Parisian War, and in particular the war against Sextus Pompey, who was blockading Italy after he had taken over Sicily. So these are going to occupy the time of Octavian from 41 to 40 for the Parisian War, and then his war against Sextus Pompey that only ends in 36 BC at the Battle of Nolocus in Sicily. Now the succeeding years, it's going to be a real Game of Thrones, and he will have a marriage alliance with Mark Antony by marrying him to Octavia, his sister. That's not to last, though, because Mark Antony is going to transfer over to Alexandria 
and live with Cleopatra. And they're going to have children. And this is the real showdown between Octavian and Mark Antony and Cleopatra that culminates in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. But Cleopatra and Mark Antony fail. And the victory is total for Augustus. He celebrates a triple triumph in 29 BC. He's going to surrender his authority to the Senate. They're promptly going to give it back to him. There are constitutional reforms. He is recognized in 27 BC as Augustus and the Princeps. And he says he ushers in, at that point, the famous Pax Augusta, which actually entails him leaving Rome very frequently. He's in Spain and Gaul from 27 to 24. And he's again out of town from 22 to 19. He's in Sicily and in the east. And then he's back in Gaul from 16 to 13 and 11 to 10 BC. So there is a lot of activity that he has to do outside of Rome to shore up the empire. The golden age of Augustus, we recognize at the incredible contributions in poetry and history by authors such as Virgil, Horace, Propertius, Tibullus, Ovid, and Livy. There was a lot of religious reform. More legislation was passed. The secular games were celebrated in 17 BC. And in 12 BC, he becomes the Pontifex Maximus. He celebrated great triumphs politically. He has the Parthian standards returned in 20 BC. But the realities are, there are a lot of setbacks. There are family dramas. There are conspiracies, floods, famines. He has problems having an heir. Marcellus, Agrippa, his grandsons, Gaius and Lucius. Finally, he settles on Tiberius. There's a great rebellion from six to nine in Pannonia and the famous defeat of Varus, who loses three legions in nine AD. So there are a lot of failures in the reign of Augustus, but he had a long reign. He lived to the age of 76. He dies in AD 14 and he left behind an incredible legacy and his successors spanned the centuries. Let's take a look at now how he transformed the city of Rome. Let's start with the mausoleum of Augustus. This was a defining structure at the Northern Campus Martius, and it's gonna be used by successors for about 100 years next to the Tiber River in the center of playing fields and gardens that he inaugurated on the southern end of the Campus Martius here, we see the Pantheon constructed by his right-hand man, Agrippa, and next to it, the Saipta that Augustus rebuilt, and adjoining it is the end point of the Aqua Virgo aqueduct built by Agrippa. In the southernmost Campus Martius, of course, we have the magnificent theater of Marcellus built by Augustus. Next to it, of course, is also the temple of Apollo Socianus, which is attributed to Augustus and Socius. This modern museum next to the Mausoleum of Augustus holds another incredible Augustan monument. It is the Ara Pacis, celebrating the peace that Augustus was so fond of saying he brought to Rome after the civil wars. This was vowed in 13 BC and is completed and dedicated in 9 BC. And we have here a dynastic monument because amidst all the wonderful decorations, this was once all painted, we have a procession of the relatives of Augustus on the exterior and on the interior, we actually have the altar itself used for sacrifice. Let's go to the forum. He certainly had a, a hand in the forum reconstruction. He builds the Basilica Emilia and the Basilica Julia. And on the short end, there is that temple of Divus Julius. Next to the Basilica Amelia, there is the Curia, which we can see still standing in the distance, rebuilt after a fire in the third century, pivoting over past the three columns of the Temple of the Castors, rebuilt by Tiberius under Augustus. He has such a great impact on the forum itself. On the Palatine Hill next to his house, he builds the magnificent temple of Apollo, and that in turn is next to that smaller Republican sanctuary area that we can see to the side. 
What's remaining from the House of Augustus, there's not much to say, but there are a lot of wall paintings that are previously dating to a house that he eventually takes over. So there's so much that we can see in Rome today from the reign of Augustus. The magnificent Arapacus is a standout. It's the best preserved sculptural monument we have from ancient Rome. Augustus, what a legacy. He's the imperator that left behind a reformed constitution. His reformulation allowed for there now to be the princeps, the emperor, and his legacy would live on for centuries. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And this video was brought to you through a grant from the CAAS Mashantoni Award.